Rachel Gordon. Was she narcissistically abused? Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, and Rachel Gordon is proving that old adage with her cringy, ranty interviews with anyone who will give her a platform. For those of you who are not fans of KISS, that 70s band that will not die, Rachel Gordon is the ex-girlfriend of original lead guitarist Ace Fraley, a.k.a. The Spaceman. KISS just happens to be one of showbiz's longest-running soap operas, fronted by the disturbingly flamboyant Paul Stanley, along with compulsive sex addict Gene Simmons, the saga hasn't aged well. Simmons and Stanley are so notoriously greedy and desperate to remain relevant and profitable that it literally took a pandemic to derail their rock and roll psycho circus gravy train. Rachel Gordon and Ace Fraley were a couple for 12 years, Ace was already two years sober when they got together. Rachel was by his side as Ace rehabilitated his image and resuscitated his career. Ace gave Rachel a lot of credit for her support. It seemed he couldn't say enough good things about her. Their split last year came as a real shock. Since the breakup, Rachel has come out swinging labeling Ace a narcissist and claiming she'd been emotionally abused. This certainly seems plausible, as she, in my opinion, as everything on this channel is my opinion based on my experience, I am not a doctor, Rachel's behavior seems consistent with someone who has been narcissistically abused. When you are enmeshed romantically with a narcissist, it's their way or the highway. You enter their world. It's all about them. Although they never married even after 12 years, she still kept all her eggs in one basket. She put her own musical career on hold. Rachel now complains that she has no one left she built her entire world around Ace, but now his people, who used to care for and support her, are now gone. It appears that he up and left her high and dry. It's easy to dismiss her as a gold digger, bitter from rejection, but what if she wasn't a gold digger per se? What if Rachel was operating according to a social contract, assuming that Ace would uphold his own end of the bargain. Rachel did a lot for Ace, and it certainly looks unseemly for him to unceremoniously dump her, leaving her with nothing after 12 long years. She's not a young woman anymore. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but in the entertainment world, youth is a commodity, and even taking one year off is like a lifetime. It is possible that there is more to the story behind the breakup, but if there is, no one's saying. I am working with the little information I have. I'm just trying to make some sense of things. Indulge me. When you are enmeshed with a narcissist, you become their flying monkey. You take on their battles. Being with a narcissist leads you to believe that you are part of something big and what matters to the narcissist is all important. I stop short of saying that the narcissist is doing any of the convincing. This is something in your head. This is something that you take on to prove your love and devotion, as if any of that would make any difference to the narcissist in the long run. There is a video detailing a phone call where Rachel harasses Gordon G.G. Gebert about something he wrote in Kiss and Tell that supposedly Ace took offense to. I say something because at no time during the 15-minute call was 
Rachel able to articulate just what it was that she objected to. Irrational and unhinged, she could only repeat that Ace was six years sober and had turned his life around and blah, 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 blah. She admitted that she hadn't even read the book in question, a case of feelings being more important than the facts. Rachel really made a fool of herself here. Rachel as Ace's attack dog is particularly difficult to listen to in light of their recent breakup. Her impassioned defense of all things Ace sounds ironic and naive. Another reason to believe Rachel is that her story is consistent. She has made allegations about Gene Simmons sexually assaulting her on two occasions. She is violating a non-disclosure agreement to go after him. She is bound and determined to bring Simmons down. What I gather is that Paul and Jean were making overtures to Ace making nice and collaborating in advance of what would soon be dubbed their end-of-the-road tour. Ace was all in and was hoping that if all went well, he would be included on the tour. At a promotional appearance featuring Ace, Gene Simmons allegedly groped Rachel and propositioned her. She was, not surprisingly, disgusted. She complained to Ace but was disappointed in his response. He didn't want her making a big stink about it as he had to work with Jean, etc., etc. Now, I am not making any excuses for Gene Simmons in any way, shape, or form, but it is fully consistent with everything I know about him to believe that he perceived that he owned Ace. Ace like the spaceman image and makeup he willingly sold, belonged to Gene, and that if Gene wanted a piece of Ace's girlfriend, he ought to be entitled to it. If Ace wanted back in the band, wouldn't he be expected to go along to get along? And I'm not saying that's right or that I agree with it. And of course, I am only speculating. I wasn't there. I don't know these people. I'm just saying that when you are circulating within these echelons of power, that is the way they think. There is all manner of leverage and blackmail and unspoken understandings and agreements. Kiss has always had strange internal politics. If her allegations are true, I'm not saying that Rachel should have trafficked herself to Jean for Ace to be welcomed back into the reunion tour. But I'm surprised that she was unprepared for this possibility. Of course, when you're dealing with compulsive sex addicts and narcissists, there is no social contract. Rachel was in a no-win situation. At the end of the day, Ace was shut out of the end of the road tour. Rachel went public and wouldn't shut up about Jean's advances or the betrayal. She was even interviewed by the late Isaac Cappy. Yes, she and Cappy were friends. Rachel, no doubt, has many interesting stories to tell, and I would love to hear them all because this kiss crap is getting boring. Suddenly, abruptly, Rachel and Ace break up. Did Ace dump Rachel because she sabotaged his opportunity to reunite with Kiss? If the whole point of Rachel's 12-year odyssey was to help Ace get all prepped and healthy with a great work ethic and solid body of solo tours and albums to prove that he was worthy of Kiss, then being passed over for Tommy Thayer was a terrible blow. So let's listen to the story Rachel is telling. She was with a rock star for 12 years. She gave up her own career 
to support him 24-7. Okay, do not do that. Never give up that much of yourself for a relationship. If the other party demands that as a condition of the relationship, this is a red flag and you need to run. If you willingly lose yourself in the relationship, then you, I'm sorry to say, sooner or later are going to find yourself ripped off. It's not going to work out like you think it's going to work out. That's just the way it is. Like Alanis Morissette sang, you live, you learn. They were together 12 years but never married. She kept referring to herself as his wife, as his common-law wife, even though common law is no longer a thing and hasn't been a thing for a very long time. So she obviously wanted to be married. But how long are you going to wait around? She had no security without marriage. Therefore, he was free to dump her, leaving her with nothing. So don't do that. Never leave yourself in a vulnerable position. If you think that you're irreplaceable in someone's life, think again. People are assholes. You're an asshole for being such a dimwit. She was disgusted by Jean Simmons hitting on her. Well, Jean Simmons is a notorious compulsive sex addict. Someone like that is not a respecter of persons nor boundaries. It is foolish to expect such a person to make an exception for you. This is who they are and what they do. She is trying to cobble together a lawsuit or criminal case a la Weinstein or Jeremy. I do think that this is something that could get some traction, but she needs to pull herself together and do a better job of presenting herself because not enough people recognize what a traumatized person looks like. All right, that's all I have for today. Thank you for listening. Please like, please share. Take care of yourselves. After Arts, out. If you'd like to support me on Patreon, I'd be delighted to have you. Your support will help keep the content fresh and always evolving. Thanks again for your support. After Arts, out.